This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruschi. It was a hot summer day in July of 2015 when Sandy Smith received news that would change her life forever. Information that no parent should ever have to receive. Her son, Stephen, was found dead on the side of a remote road near the Murdaugh family's estate in South Carolina. The news, of course, a devastating blow to Sandy. She was already grappling with the loss of her husband, Joel, who had passed away just a few months prior. Then adding to that grief, her son. She struggled to come to terms with her son's death. She couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to the story. This wasn't just some random hit and run Six years later in 2021, the Murdoch family would make headlines, not because that they were near the spot of where this hit and run took place, alleged hit and run. I say alleged very strongly. But because Alec Murdoch was was arrested for the murder of his wife, Maggie, and son, Paul. The case, of course, capturing the nation's attention as the trial unfolded, it became clear that the Murdaughs were no strangers to scandal or lies. One of the biggest things that they were very, very far from was telling the truth. As Sandy followed the case, she couldn't help but think about her own son. And more questions would linger about his mysterious death. before law enforcement had even confirmed that Stephen's body had been found. Surprise, surprise. One of the Murdaughs, Randy Murdaugh, Alec's older brother, called the Smith family, ordering his help in investigating the death. How convenient. Is this a neighbor helping a neighbor, or is this more in line with Alec wandering through the emergency room after the boat crash of Mallory Beach and her death telling everyone not to talk to the police and he's going to handle everything with the badge hanging out of his pocket. A badge that he shouldn't have had. Was this someone stepping in trying to do damage control far before real answers could be found? Maybe even stopping answers from being found because well those answers could point a very sharp finger at the Murdoch's and we wouldn't want to do that now would we Alec doesn't do too well when he's caught in his lies as we all know at first Sandy was like okay someone's gonna help right then I was a grieving mother she said I didn't care I told them Yeah, if you want to do it, do it, Sandy said, but they kept inserting themselves and inserting themselves in places where they shouldn't be inserting themselves. When Sandy visited the crime scene, the Murdaughs were there and the state troopers had to tell them to leave because they wanted to go around. They wanted to take some pictures. They want to get up and close and personal, which in many cases they've been able to do. Especially Alec with his police running lights and the badge that he so often showed to get himself into situations where he otherwise shouldn't be. Stephen's death was initially labeled a hit and run by a Charleston pathologist, Aaron Presnell. But police first told Sandy he was shot to death. So how is it? How is it that you can be that far off on your assumption of shot to death or hit and run? 
Seems very easy to figure out, wouldn't it? First, they said the gunshot and then hit and run. And it's still ruled a hit and run. Sandy said it's not a hit and run. It's a murder. Because when it's a hit and run, you're not beaten. You don't still have your shoes on either in 99% of cases. And the places where the injuries took place on Stephen's body were in no way consistent with a hit and run. But, you know, it's South Carolina's low country. And they don't take too kindly to folks who may not be exactly like them. You know, because Stephen was gay and all. We know he was beaten. I mean, it was horrible. His eye socket was crushed and then his forehead skin was like on top of his head. And they just crushed the whole back of his skull. Not a hit and run. South Carolina law enforcement sled finally reopened a probe into Stephen's death in June of 2021, just after Maggie and Paul Murdaugh were murdered. This death certificate listed the official cause of death as blunt force trauma. Sandy's always wondered why her son would have been on the remote road near the Murdaugh estate. Saying Stephen wouldn't be walking on that road. He'd have walked through the woods because he didn't trust people. And if he was near the road, he'd have been in the cornfield or out in the woods onto the side. He didn't trust people. And he knew those back roads like the back of his hand. He wouldn't have been involved in a hit and run. Suspiciously, there were rumors. And I stress they were just rumors. But word travels fast in a small town. And sometimes when there's smoke, there's fire. When that fire starts burning a little out of control, maybe a romantic fire, a romantic fire that maybe wouldn't be looked too kindly upon by, again, the folks in the low country. Rumors of a romantic relationship involving Buster Murdoch and Stephen. But Sandy says she doesn't buy that. Buster wouldn't have been his type, she says. Stephen liked older people. As the trial of Alec Murdoch came to a close and he was sentenced to life in prison, Sandy was left with a mix of emotions. On one hand, she felt a sense of relief that justice had been served for the murders of Maggie and Paul. But on the other hand, she was reminded of the unanswered questions surrounding her own son's death and those that are still out there, free. That may know more or have been directly involved with the murder of her son. Stephen and Buster were classmates at Wade Hampton High School in the town of Hampton. And that's where those rumors began to fly. But beyond that and those rumors, there's been no other information or evidence to suggest the relationship between the two. But if those rumors were true, and maybe information was about to get out, would it be that far of a stretch for someone with the last name of Murdaugh to be involved in eliminating part of that rumor? Part of that image they just didn't want to have come out. Judging by the track record of the Murdaughs, it's easy to say, yeah, it's easy to see how this could possibly be something that's far greater than meets the eye. Time will tell now that the microscope is firmly on the Murdaughs and the many, many crimes that have been committed by Alec and now maybe others. 
We'll just have to wait and find out. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi. Be sure to press subscribe wherever you download podcasts so you don't miss any of our breaking updates and discussions on the cases that we're following for you. You can get a commercial-free experience through Apple Podcasts right now. I'm Tony Bruschi. Thanks for listening.